that was where the most contradictions were made. Like, I forget which group specifically, but it was like, I remember hearing somebody say, like, oh, yeah, well, I was brought up to, like, think that everybody's the same and, like, not look at color. And then they were like, but if I ever bought, like, an African-American home or anything, like, it wouldn't be okay. I felt like that was, like, the biggest subject that had, like, the most contradictions to it. Well, I can say my, my dad was really bigoted and he was very nasty and about um, wasn't a great person anyway <laughs> but to anybody <laughs> but particularly to um, anybody they worked with he would be really disparaging about anybody of a different racial identity mm -hmm. and he married a, a my mom's German and growing up in the 60s very short time after the Second World War you know, that was very difficult. Um, what lessons did you learn about race and racism as you were growing up? My dad is from the South. But my dad has always told me he has never experienced racism. And my daddy was born in 1943. And I think that is a bunch of bull crap. But he just, <laughs> wanted to, <laughs> we just wanted to say that because he said, my dad is the type, because he's old, he says, well, um, these young guys are always blaming on the white man and da 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 So he always wanted us not to think that way. So he would say, well, I never experienced racism and I don't think you experienced either. Okay, and what I was taught was to, you know, treat everybody equally like they were saying. But in this society, racism is still very alive. And my experience is, like, with my white friends is they're just like, you know, it's 2009 it's over, you know, we have, we elected Barack Obama, racism is over. I think I'm more so the opposite because I went to a predominantly white high school and it was kind of like, it wasn't that I was forced to, you know, mingle, but I was and I, you know, met all these different people from these different backgrounds. It's, not, it's like I didn't have time to be picky about who I hung out with because if you sit around and you're picky, you're not going to have any friends. Mm -hmm. So you, you get what you can get and you have fun with who you have, that's how I feel. Earlier. Uh, just being adopted, I've always been treated as if I was white, so uh, throughout the years, I mean, throughout high school, I would get uh, made fun of and called names, uh, but I've gotten over it, so it doesn't really bother me as much. Do you feel comfortable discussing um, race or racism in your family? Yeah, you within my families, I do. Outside of my family, even like right now, it's still a little nerve-wracking because you know that no matter what anybody says, somebody's judging. Even the people who watch us are judging, you know, in some way or form. But within my family, I don't have a problem with it because I don't really care what they think. I'm just going to say what I want anyway, so you still have to love me because you're my family. <laughs> I would feel comfortable discussing it. Situations never really come up where I had to, but I mean, if one of them started saying racist things, I would try to put them in check. <laughs> yeah, I think mine's pretty much the same way, and some of my family, I don't know where they came from, but like some things they say, even if it wasn't meant to be that way, it'll still sound somewhat offensive to me, and I'm like, okay. It's, it's been brought up before, to the point where my sister, of course, is white, and she has a boyfriend who's black, and so it was kind of like giving a forewarning before family, like the first time that she would meet, he would meet the family with her. It was like forewarning of they don't mean to be offensive, but some things they say are just kind of iffy in that context, because obviously I wouldn't hear it the same way that a black person would, so you never really knew what would be offensive. My parents, when I was very young, knew that we both looked different. Well, of course they did, but I guess when I was young, I didn't really realize that for a while. So they would uh, get books and uh, different, like, PBS learning programs for me to watch, I guess, kind of to, like, instill that culture in me also. So, I mean, that, I was aware of that. I mean, they didn't tell me, like, straight up, like, kids are going to make fun of your eyes, like, when you go to kindergarten and stuff like that. <laughs> My brother was told he better not bring a white woman in the house. I not, told oh, you know, yeah. I, my family, yeah. I, don't think I, I didn't right. get that. No, because my brother married to a white woman, and then my brothers date. That's all they dated were white women, 
And so and my mom much. never, she said, well, if that's who you like, that's who you like. Mom, but all the females are have always dated black men. And we have never, ever been close. My dad don't talk about it at all. So it's like, my mom is just whoever you date, that's who you date. That's your choice. My family was kind of iffy when I took a Cuban girl to prom. They, they had, yeah, they, I took a Cuban girl to prom and it was very interesting to meet her parents, but my, my mom, like my mom, she's not, she's really not racist, but she'll joke and she'll be like, so you're taking a Chalupa? Oh, and when she said that to me, and I was actually going out with the girl, but she didn't know, I was just like, really mom, like you really haven't, you know, got past that and she's like I'm look I am not even I'm just playing with you I'm just it's it's kind of surprising that you know you kind of went you know went outside the, outside the race like that she, those aren't her exact words but that's how it was kind of interpreted to me and it was kind of embarrassing because then she'd be like oh yeah hey like I'm, none of my family did it really like on my mom's side, like all of them grew up around white folks, so they're not even like racist or anything. But they'll be like, they're just like, oh, hey, Reggie, um, so you took a Cuban girl? How was that? You know, hey, what's your next step, right? And I'm like, oh, you guys, come on.